While the process used to gradually expense the cost of fixed assets is called depreciation, the process used to expense the cost of natural resources is called depletion. Natural resources are assets that are formed naturally over time and the supply of which is not indefinite. Some examples of natural resources include timber, minerals, and oil. Like other long-term assets, natural resources are initially reported on the balance sheet at initial cost and then gradually expensed through the depletion process. The depletion process resembles the units of activity depreciation method. We start by determining the rate of depletion incurred each time a unit of the resource is extracted, and then the depletion rate is multiplied by the quantity extracted. To record the depletion expense, the debit is to depletion expense, and the credit is to accumulated depletion, a contra asset account. Assume that Cassie Enterprises purchased mining rights at $600,000. The company estimates that it will be able to extract 1,500,000 tons of mineral. This year, the company extracted 80,000 tons. First, the company determines the rate of depletion incurred each time a unit of the resource is extracted. That rate is the cost of the natural resource, or $600,000, divided by the expected output of 1,500,000 tons. This means that each time a ton of mineral is extracted, 40 cents of the natural resource has been depleted. Second, the company multiplies the depletion rate by the quantity extracted to arrive at depletion expense. Therefore, the current period depletion expense equals 40 cents times 80,000 tons, which is $32,000. The depletion amount is then recorded as an expense on the income statement, a debit, and the credit comes from an accumulated depletion account which is a contra asset account used to reduce the carrying amount of the natural resource from its initial cost to an amount net of depletion already taken. An intangible asset is an asset that is not physical, that cannot be touched. These assets typically represent rights, privileges, or competitive advantages. The most common intangible assets are patents, copyrights, trademarks, and goodwill. While the process used to gradually expense the cost of fixed assets is called depreciation, and the process used to expense the cost of natural resources is called depletion, the process used to expense the cost of intangible assets is called amortization. Intangible assets can be categorized by their useful life, limited or unlimited. Intangible assets with a limited life should be amortized over their useful life. Intangible assets with an indefinite life, such as goodwill, should not be amortized at all. When it comes to amortization, there is only one method, the straight line method. This means that computing amortization simply involves dividing the cost of the intangible asset by its useful life. There are four specific types of intangibles patents, copyrights, trademarks, and goodwill. A patent is an exclusive right granted to use a process or to produce or sell an item. Patents have a maximum useful life of 20 years. Since a patent has a limited life, it should be amortized over its estimated life not to exceed 20 years. Suppose that Hollywood movies purchased a patent for $35,000. When the patent is first acquired, it is recorded at initial cost. Suppose further that the patent has a useful life of 20 years. Each year, the company will record an amortization expense of $1,750, which is $35,000 divided by 20. The amortization amount is recorded as an amortization expense on the income statement, a debit and the credit is to accumulated amortization, which is a contra asset account used to reduce the carrying amount of the patent from its initial cost to an amount net of amortization already taken. A copyright provides exclusive publishing rights to performing arts, literary works, visual arts, digital content, photographs, and motion pictures. A copyright has a useful life that can extend up to 70 years beyond the death of the author of the work. 
Suppose that Hollywood movies purchased a copyright for $140,000. When the copyright is first acquired, it is recorded at its initial cost. Suppose further that this particular copyright has a useful life of 25 years. Each year, the company will record an amortization expense of $5,600, which is $140,000 divided by 25. The amortization amount is recorded as an amortization expense on the income statement, a debit, and the credit is to accumulated amortization. A trademark is a unique symbol, name, phrase, or even a sound used to identify a business entity, product, or service. Some examples of trademarks include the golden arches representing McDonald's, the swoosh for Nike, and the siren for Starbucks. If the trademark is internally developed, the development costs are charged to an expense account when incurred, and therefore there is nothing to amortize. However, if a trademark is purchased, the cost of the asset is recorded at its initial cost and then amortized over its life. Unlike copyrights and patents, trademarks can be renewed indefinitely. The cost associated with the renewal is simply expensed rather than capitalized and amortized. Suppose that Tom Burgers purchases a trademark for $150,000. When the trademark is first purchased, it is recorded at its initial cost. Suppose further that this particular trademark has a useful life of 30 years. Each year, the company will record an amortization expense of $5,000, which is $150,000 divided by 30. The amortization amount is recorded as an amortization expense on the income statement, a debit, and the credit is to accumulate an amortization. Goodwill occurs when, in the course of an acquisition of a company, the price paid exceeds the market value of the net assets of the acquired company. Therefore, the buyer paid a premium, and this premium is called goodwill. Unlike other intangible assets, goodwill is not recorded unless the entire business is acquired. Goodwill is not subject to amortization, but must be tested each year for impairment.